Good afternoon. I'm Cecil Cahoon, a proud graduate of the Majeska Simpkins School for Human Rights and one member of the South Carolina Progressive Network Education Fund Board of Directors. I regret that I cannot be with you in person this afternoon, but I'm pleased and honored to speak with you from afar to congratulate and welcome you to the work of building a greater society, a more beloved community, a more perfect union, and a real democracy in South Carolina. My wife and I had a conversation recently about selling our souls. We live in a capitalist economy, so selling our souls should not be a foreign concept. Another way of putting it, though, is investing our lives, investing our time, our labor, our energy, our blood, sweat, and tears. We concluded that everyone sells their soul or invests their life in one of two categories, either for temporal profit, the sort of gain that benefits us personally, that fattens the wallet and swells the bank account, or for causes that are bigger than ourselves and will create the kind of world in which we want to live and purposes that will outlive us. Each of us knows people who have sold their souls or invested their lives on both sides of that divide. My wife and I made decisions early in our lives to take the second path. Both of us were products of public schools and we became teachers in public schools. She remained in the classroom for a full career and I left the classroom in 1998 only to lobby for better policies in public education, better funding for public schools and better employment rights and benefits for public sector employees. Since 2005, I've worked as a field organizer for the National Education Association, primarily across the South, but with occasional projects in other regions. That work, the work that I've done with educators in public schools, especially the work I've done across the South, and with educators' allies in other organizations and communities, has grounded me out of necessity in principles of movement building, principles of citizenship and action, principles of radical, revolutionary, participatory democracy, the kind of democracy that's available to everyone. If that sounds familiar to you, especially after spending the past several months learning a people's history of South Carolina from Dr. Robert Green and the truly stellar array of guest lecturers that Dr. Green and Brett Bercy have curated for your benefit, if that sounds familiar to you now, it should. Principles of movement building, of citizenship and action, and of radical and revolutionary democracy are the bedrock and the guiding principles of the Progressive Network and the Majeska School. They all come down to the principle of practicing what we preach and leading people to understand their power in a real democracy. That's heavy work but it's worth that is worth selling your soul and investing your life to do. Now, I came to South Carolina to do and to live and to do this work starting in 2002. I spent almost four years doing it in Columbia. I'd spent six months at the State House fighting an uphill battle against entrenched conservative ideology, followed by six months of traveling and talking with our education leaders in all 46 counties, listening to them and reporting to them on who fought for us in state government and who fought us in state government. It was an awakening to the banality of evil. But then I took on a broader portfolio with NEA across the South, spending the year since 2005 working in every state of the old Confederacy has given me some perspective on South Carolina and its place in the region and the nation. I can describe that perspective briefly this way. For centuries, our state has been the incubator of inhumane ideas, the place where malignant seeds of public policy are germinated for propagation to other capitals of the South and the rest of the nation. This is not hyperbole. Dr. Green and others have identified scores of examples in your Sunday deep dives and Monday evening classes. In example after example, our state has fought above its weight to train its sister states of the South and to infect the nation with more of its peculiar malices, 
all the way to and including this present moment. I have seen this myself from Little Rock, from Nashville, from Frankfurt, and from Jackson, from Baton Rouge, from Montgomery, from Raleigh, even from Tallahassee. A sick and twisted view of South Carolina as a leader in the worst kinds of policies, a leader in social control, a leader in suppressing the collective power of its citizens. It's almost comical to see and hear conservative leaders in other states when they run out of bad ideas or they have to face a new uprising of progressive people power. Comical to see them come almost to the point of asking, what would South Carolina do? But there's another side of that coin. Working in these foreign, so to speak, capitals since 2005 has given me a perspective on the progressive network and the Majeska Simpkins School, an understanding of how unique they are, not only in the South, but across the country. There isn't another organization like it doing what it does, operating under a similar mission. If you haven't reviewed the network's website lately, you should. You'll find there these words, quote, the initial work of the school will be training organizers to build an effective movement for social justice. As the school develops, trained organizers will lead classes in schools, churches, and communities that range from introductory civics to direct action. The long-term aim of the school is to empower citizens so they can empower, uh, they can transform the power structure in South Carolina. Unquote. The network is not an organization of organizations, but an organization of persons, the connective tissue of this work among causes between one generation and the next. The network is the active, not passive, but active and activist conscience of our state. It's all the more significant that this unique organization exists only in the beating heart of the South, in South Carolina. This is the legacy you inherit as a graduate of the Majeska School today. The work begun by people you never knew has passed through many hands over many generations, and now it is passed into yours. What you receive today is not just a piece of paper to hang on a wall. It's an obligation, a commitment to do the work, to grow this connective tissue that now includes you. You're part of the muscle that goes all the way back to Robert Smalls and the Reconstruction Legislature who established the promise of democracy in our state constitution. It goes back through Majeska Monteith Simpkins and the massive talent she brought into South Carolina, like W.E.B. Du Bois and Paul Robeson, to Isaac Woodard and Sarah Mae Fleming, to Thurgood Marshall and Jay Wadey's Waring, to Septima Clark, to Joseph Delane and Harry and Elizabeth Briggs, to Millicent Brown, to Sarah Leverett and Harriet Hancock, to Chief Harold Hatcher and Lily Littlewater, to Cecil Williams and Jim Felder, to Brett Bercy and Becky Robbins, to Joe Neal and Gilda Cobb Hunter, to Vernon Burton and Armand Durfner, to Lewis Pitts, to Robert Green, to all of the Majeska alumni and to one another. You are connected. There's enough work to go around and the batons are in your hands now. Tag, you're it. You're also the newest subjects of the law of irretrievable innocence. That is the law that says, once you know, you know, and you can't go back to not knowing. That means you have decisions to make now. There's a reason we call this event commencement. It's not the end, but the beginning. Friends, this awareness isn't a prize or a gift. It is a burden to bear but it's the kind you bear best by doing something with it, by carrying it forward and sharing it with others. So you brand new graduates of the Majeska Simpkins School of Human Rights have questions to ask and answer for yourself and for one another today.
how will you carry that burden forward? What will you do with what you know now, with who you know now? And who are you going to bring into this unique work with us? If I were sitting in your seat today, I'd start this afternoon by re reaching out to the ones who brought you into and through the school and thanking them for sharing it with you. Before the weekend is over, I would draft and send a short essay to Brett and Becky for posting on the network's website, describing what you've learned, how that knowledge will inform your work and benefit your causes. And I'd spend part of the next week reaching out to the four or five people you know who you want to bring into this connective tissue into the network and into the Majeska School with you and with us. As Majeska teaches us still, this is no sitting down time. I look forward to our paths crossing and merging in person in the network and to continuing to act on our shared awareness together. Again, thank you for letting me talk with you from afar and congratulations, fellow alumni.